um share, share is um some like there was some nice improvements that we made um with the 10.2 release i'm not sure how many of you have um uh, played around with it how many of you know that um that happened and then the detail behind it so this uh so this is so what i want to focus on here is um share what we did and and how how did we do it like the detail behind it so this will be this will help others people to follow what we have done um so that they know what has happened and it also helps us like if if you know something hey uh, this approach that you took um i i see that there is a corner case that you missed so it's a both like you know it it helps you to know the detail and it you, you if you have any um share suggestions or corner cases that we can you know add, um um take that as a consideration and then iterate on it right um yeah um so yeah so we so there were two um uh, good improvements that we made uh, one is um uh, improving the service list page and and then service map page um one of the popular feature requests that we had uh, in the signals repo is that um, um people come back and say hey my services are not showing up in the uh, uh, listing page why, why are they not showing up but they are but they are showing uh, up in the traces page um prior to this release what we were doing is um we were only showing the uh, services of type web server like you know api service api services kind of things which are uh, responding to the client requests right but given the various architectures organizations follow um that does not fulfill the you know needs for you know uh people who have you know let's say somebody who has um event driven architecture they they will have mostly put producer and consumer services but if you're trying to show only on the show um web services they will not have a much to see there um so that's the one of the features that we made um to show every service like it's not it's no longer the um web server service it's it's everything and the other improvement that we made was making the like uh the service map page had only you know uh, last 5 minutes ka data and then that's everything is done like it's uh, it it takes lot of time if you have um, like large amount of uh, data generated within that so we moved away from we we moved away from that and then we uh, added a pre aggregation which um, response back with in you know like faster but and and, and it still gives you the data that's required okay um so yeah let's uh, may get started okay um so i want to make sure that what so what what is a service like what well, in the service listing page you are showing me you know number of services right what qualifies as a service um for for us to show um so it's uh, any instrumented application um that sending us the data with a uh, service that name semantic conventions that's uh, you know standard semantic convention that's uh, enforced by the open telemetry this could be a standalone microservice or it could be a module within a you know monolith like it, it does not matter how how they are um, you know making use of it but only what matters is that um, hey, if you're sending me n number of uh, you know if you're sending me tele telemetry with n number of unique service names uh, we're going to show it um, and then we're going to show the you know uh, abm metrics for that service right um, so now so since we no longer have the restriction that i'm only going to show the web service web services um now the question that people might have is how are you going to calculate the red matrix for me right uh, if it's a, if it's a api service it's easier like it's straight forward for anybody to understand like what is it doing um for a for a api service um the request latency is that how much how much time did an api api took right um and and then if if that api responded with 500 it's a error like error request so this is 
straight forward for um, uh, like it's obvious people people get it right away. But how do you? Uh, so now now we change it to uh, support you know different sorts of architecture. How do we, how are we going to show me the um, red matrix? Like how what how do I know what how what information are you trying to show me? Right. Um, in the next slide, I'll take you through that. Um, so in a distributed trace, uh, so you, you have number of um, microservices and each, um, so in a distributed trace, either a service, a star, it's the, it's the one that is starting the trace or it takes part in the whole uh, district, like the trace journey, right? It, um so within that trace journey from you know end to in, in a, in a end to end request within that trace journey um when it takes part uh, in in that journey so it's going to have a number of spans within that service let's say um if for an a web server it's a um, ab request like endpoint request and then within that endpoint there's a call to db or there's a call to external host a number of things it, it does right um so in this trace journey within we are looking at the within the context of a individual service when trace arrives like the trace arrives at um like it, it starts at service at some point and then it uh, it ends at service in uh, it ends that its journey in at different point of time right so there is going to be a, a span which is which is the so what we are, what we are calling it as a subroute span within within this um, service, it's the root of the trace journey. Um, so it, this what we are calling as an entry point span. So this is the span which is initiating the trace transaction in this service. Um, to make it simply, this is a endpoint like slash account slash account ID. This could be uh, something like that for a web service. And for a consumer service, this could be slash. Um, this could be just a um, Kafka that consume for it. So that's what we're calling an entry point span. This entry point span, like how long does it take? Like how long did this operation take? That's what we consider as a latency. So this this is no longer an, a request because it, it, it's not specific to web service. What we're calling it is an operation. So how long? Did this operation take is what we consider as a um, um, duration for this uh, service. Uh, and if if did did this operation has any failure, so it does not matter to us. Like if you look at it, this graph, it does not matter to uh, you know end user if this one one of the internal spans had an issue. It's only an error request if the top level one had an issue. For example, in in a web server. It's only an um, <clears throat> sorry. It's only an error request if it responded back with the 500. It does not. If one of the internal spans, let's say the external host, for some reason gave the 404, that's that's not like out of 500. It's it's that we do not count it as an error request. We only count it as an error request if this um, entry point span and it had an issue. Okay, so that's what we use for calculating the error rate. So now you know what's used for the latency, what's used for the error rate, and then what's the call rate. So number of times, like this entry point span that we encounter is what we consider as operation. And this becomes the um, rate for this service, right? Um, so this, like if the, now you know this detail, if you map this information to a web server, it's a straightforward. If you take like, let's say, um uh shipping service which is receiving request um not true sure. yeah so there, there's another consumer service um which which is not talking to which is going to be part of this trace through the some sort of broker it's not going to be like you know uh, to, taking part in the request response model so this is going to be part of the broker where it's consuming it is still important for us to show this service consumer service right um so the the number of so the number of messages that it consumes is the call rate for us and then the how long does like after consuming and then it does some processing right how long did that operation take is what we consider as a duration and if if there was an error during performing that 
operation that we consider as a error rate um yeah so this is like this is so when when we move to like since we are showing the number of services so we also change the way that we present it to the data so it's no longer the uh, uh, end point it's what we what we um, call it as a generic name an operation like it could be a http request or it could be consume message right um, so this is how the that meant like when you come and see hey like you know i i'm, I'm seeing this new service how are this red mat is calculated? It's based on this um, this entry point span that we see in the service. But if this is some some if this is somewhere in the middle, right? But let's say if if the service is starting it, so there's only going to be again if if it if that's if there is a service which is act which is the uh, very beginning of the end to end journey it's the same so if there can be it could be something like a button click which initiated the whole end to end trace in a transaction right so that how how long uh, uh, did that take like from clicking on the button to you know travel, uh, going through the number of services and getting the response back data that's what will be considered for the um, one which is initiating the whole trace right so so this is like the this is how the red matrix calculation uh, has changed right so now we'll get into the like how like the technical detail behind it now you so know can so, we have a quick question in between like yeah, so that sure. everyone in the team is the same page otherwise it just gets input to the team yeah. so which page or feature level page are we talking about in uh, are we talking about in signals Polash, should you like to uh, answer that? Is it me? Yes, Polash. Which page uh, are we talking about? Is the service page only? Means where the different listing has been done. The list page, service list page. Yeah. Right. So one question like i want to know others opinion to this also what what can be the edge cases with this thoughts like what we do is we first calculate the entry point span names like the operations like this is an entry point operation to the service and we maintain a list of it like it can be 10 20 30 entry point spans into a service so whenever we talk about we're calculating red matrix of a service we will pick up those spans only and we'll do all the calculations whether we talk about errors or latency or rps based on that those sets of, of spans only so what can be the edge cases what can i would say um, cause noise in this calculation So it's okay if nobody has idea immediately, but thoughts on that would be very much appreciated because we are seeing some anomalies and we are trying to reason out a couple of things about like the way we know it is correct that what we're doing, but we are seeing some anomalies in different use cases and we have got a few pointers on what it should be and why they are coming, but would love to know like uh, brainstorm ideas into this like if this is the case, then how we should handle it? Like, I can give you one example. Like, if we in, in, in trace has a missing span and there was just one span in a trace, and that what just one span came, and that was an end like that was that had service name, span name, and a span kind. So we obviously have to take that only as a, a, a serv as as the entry level span to a service so but that span was an outlier so such sort of spans ideally would have been inserted somewhere in the tree but for some cases it was just a single level span that happened so what will happen for all the calculations going forward this span will be used in the calculation because it was it had it occurred just one time and we have we are including it now that is span into the calculation of the red matrix of that service an example would be http get to something else like we 
counted that as an entry level span of the service. And now, if data span is part of a hundred uh, span long trace, then we are counting data span again and again. Like assume, like we now know, like we have noted it down that as an it is an entry level span because of an outlier or an anomaly. And uh, now we are calculating that. So it is like if. Um, Sorry. Yeah, so I'm saying, um, as Shrikan mentioned, like um, oh, we only consider the parent span, right, for this calculation. Whenever like a service uh, where the entry point is, we only consider that span. You are saying sometimes what happens is when uh, a request or some, any request comes to a service, uh, maybe the parent span goes missing or something like that. And the first span, we label it as the entry point. Right, and and that becomes the basis of calculation for uh, subsequent requests. But what if the like? But when the second request comes, Ankit, and we see that this is a different uh, span, which is not uh, like which was not the earlier the, the earlier entry level span. So there, can we identify? I mean, in terms of like, if we see like the second the in the second request, uh, that span is is having a parent span. Then we yeah, can, we can do that. Like yeah. if we like, we can run something like that. That if this kind of operation is happening rarely as an entry point span, hmm. then we can ignore it. Like that is a, not the common scenario, and we can ignore that one uh, case. Yeah. But yeah, like I just opened it up for discussion so that you can also yeah, think of might be very cases. Intense computing. But I mean, Ankit, uh, for like the missing span is expected to be very less, right? The number of missing spans because generally, if if they are a high load company, they will be using Kafka or something. The, not yeah. a, that is not a problem. Even okay. due to lack of capacity planning, it happened once, and mm. then the capacity planning was taken under, and everything mm. now runs smoothly. But during just that one minute, if we have a lot of missing spans, then we will have corrupted our data points for calculating of red metrics, and that would be taken in forward in the calculation also sure so like I, I, I to give more concrete example i think so that everybody follows let's say there is a there is a completely isolated service like a cron job which is doing some operation like there is only one span within that like it's a cron job it's only doing something there is only one span for that service what would you expect the red metrics to be so there is only one span that span duration is what you consider as a duration and the number of such spans you see as a, a call rate and then if there was an error error rate so we we do not know if this is taking part in the so we what we had seen anomalous let's say check out services there ideally let's say this this uh, uh blue let's take this blue span ideally it should it should never be on its own like there can never be a, a trace where this is the there's only single span and this and then that that single span has the checkout as a service name and then some operation that should never happen, but it happened. So now that it, this anomalous span made it to the entries. So now what we are saying is, hey, uh, this uh, this anomalous span is also what I consider as a parent span parent because span. I have seen one one such trace where this is that's only the one single trace. But um, so now it made it to the operations list, which I consider as a top level. Right, which is inaccurate. You ideally, in, in in let's say out of hundreds uh, hundred such cases, you only want so one such case where it it's a parent span because of the corrupt trace. Uh, but it, since it made it to the list, uh, it we and then it, it affects how the red metrics are calculated. So that's that's one such case that we have noticed from user like real like from their production systems. Uh, if you think you know the, this approach, if you know has uh, some other edge cases, um, like if you can, like if you think something is, uh, you know, such edge cases are there. Uh, you sh if you share, so we do, we we haven't really um, thought yeah. about, like we haven't really decided on how we want to go address this. But initially, what we want to get feedback is, does it are there any other edge cases that this this is missing? Hmm. I think one random experiment can be key uh, for any new newly instrumented service. We can sample the data for like 10 minutes or 30, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> any any amount of time duration, and then see what is the longest duration of a span in each service. And then maybe identify that this is the, like the most probable 
parent span in this service yeah so what like we that. can also do is when we are keeping it like when we are uh, creating entry point spans we can keep account of it like how many times has this is this span an entry point span and later yeah. on when we are applying the filter we can reject the outliers one we can do some sampling over uh, some days or uh, and then because any any production user will be using um it for uh, we'll be using signals in a longer term duration right so we can have candidates and then decide yes which is a parent span well i think edge cases will always be there mm, so the only reasonable i mean solution can be uh, deciding the parent span which can address like any these kind of edge cases right yes yeah, so yeah. that's what second is saying before jumping into the solution we are collecting the problems what might be yeah. there yeah so one on. one uh, uh, one other point i want to mention like i have i have seen sometimes like what uh, we see uh, when we go inside a particular service right uh, in the charts page is sometimes different from i think some users also reported i don't know if had if it has been addressed or not it is different from what we see in that column like the services page right is it different the rdd matrix uh, shown on that uh, column and in, in the charts no no um which issue are you talking about are you talking about like the red matrix in the listing page and the red uh, like the matrix in the detail page is it yeah, yeah. so there, there there is some you, there is some 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 amount of skew but it's not like okay off by very huge margin cool man yeah, yeah let's okay. go ahead yeah sorry uh, so yeah. now so this is like this is how we want like so this is the um, now, now we know what we want to do right how how do i so now what i'm interested in uh, getting the you know what i'm interested in keeping in in my database is um, how much like what are the top level like these entry point spans and then how long did it like everything detail about it um, so how how do i get this like i uh, from the tracing data that is getting ingested how do you get this data like the entry point span the name of it time time it took uh, and you know if it had an error or not so like the one one way you can say is hey i'm going to collect the, i'm going to wait for the trace like uh, in, in the open telemetry collector side i'm going to wait for the trace to collect like i'm going to collect the trace and then i will uh, i will do a scan of the trace and then i will collect the you know such top level operations because i know um, what what's the top level within that service or not so that's one way we could do but the problem with that with that approach is that i'm going to hold the like i'm i'm trying to hold the whole trace in memory and that's going to hit how much you know it's going to uh, affect how how fast does the you know ingestion rate and then how how much open telemetry collector is processing right um so we that's not that solution is uh, is not really great um so how did we like so can we do something um at, like like move move the problem from like how do we want to achieve it to a different place um so this is where we are um, leveraging the like clickhouse capabilities um so what we are doing is we are using so the metal list so when the data gets ingested uh, into the clickhouse tables um it the metalized views created on that table they act as a trigger side so like whenever the data gets inserted into the one table and then metalized views to create for that so at any time this this batch of the data that gets inserted into the main table acts as a trigger point for the one that you created um so we are looking at that data and then we are uh, making use of that metalized view to get this data um so i can let me get to the next slides yeah so this yeah this is the um, little technical detail part of it um so you what we want to get is finally what are the top level like entry point spans for this each service right um so what i want to what i want have in the main table is um, service name and the entry point span name so that I, later i can look at all such names and then derive the red matrix um 
so how how are we doing it so we have two metalized views um, one for the sub root operations where you know I, I, where the service is part of the somewhere in the middle of the trace chain it's not the one that is initiating the whole trace um, for such services what we are looking at is so i'm going to look at the um, a span and i'm going to look at the its parent span so if 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 the service name for this span is different from its service name for the parent span so so there is a service like how how we are looking at it is um so the, the, there is this span when do i consider it as a parent operation when like this is the this is not within the same service right so in the previous if you remember the previous slide so the internal spans they are going to have the same service name as the its parent span when do i consider a span as a um, a sub root level or entry point span when when its service name is different from its parent service name so that's where like the whole new span initiation started right so this part like the first materialized view that the sub root operations this takes care of it and then there are there there can be cases where the uh, trace is completely like uh, originate like the front end like front, like let's say web browser applications or you know mobile applications where the trace journey uh, is started there you do not have the parent span id at all like that's the uh, the root span so for such spans this this there is going there's not going to be any parent span id so that so this middle issue it uh, gives us like gives gives us such span su such operations now you have like whole so trace starts at some point and then it goes to number of se several services and then it ends so for the operations that we want to as an entry point for the services which are starting the um, trace journey it's covered through this metal view and then the ones which take part somewhere in the middle it's um, taken care by this metal view where we look at the service name for this span and then its parent span and then they differ so this is the so this is this, what we are asking for is this is the logic that we have followed and if you look at like if you take some data and then try to apply it it gives you the uh, result like this is accurate like let's say um, ABA server uh, if it takes one example that it gives you the data what we are asking for is are there any edge cases that that are missing with this logic like the logic that we are using where to um, come up with the uh, like um, uh, entry point span for a service right so this this will like so now the problem moved to the clickhouse clickhouse is going to take care of uh, the middle like, like the trigger when the when we let's say 5 millions of uh, traces are ingested into the you know signals index v2 table clickhouse is going to trigger this middle view and then it it runs this logic and then it inserts the data into top level operations table so now you have the um now you know what are the like now now you know the service and what are the entry point in, entry point spans for that service how are we going to like we can use this information and then we can we're going to look at the signals index v2 and apply like hey give me the you know uh, percentiles and then error rate for for you know with with the service name with this operation right so that's that's that covers the service listing page now you have the um, any kind of service and then it's operate its uh, entry point spans uh, used to, like the span names are used to calculate the red matrix right yeah so this 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 completes the what we are doing at the service listing page okay and we also made improvements for the um, service map page um so what i will also share what we were doing earlier so what we were doing earlier is um, we are going to fetch the all the data um for last interval let's say 1 minute or 5 minutes uh, now you have the whole data and then scan this whole data to get the like relationship between the spans like you know what's the source what's the parent span what's the child span how much how long did it take um so this requires you us to load the entire like entire um, into in memory and then do the calculation and send it back to the client so it's it's not with, so this is going to suffer uh, issues like you know memory issues and then you cannot load it like if you if you 
if you increase the interval to some you know bigger interval it's going to suffer like it's going to take a lot of time it's also going to require you to um, get a lot of memory um, so what we what we change it to is we change it to like let's not do the aggregation in memory when they ask for it let's maintain a table which is going to uh, have some sort of pre aggregated data uh, for x amount of interval and then when they ask for like let's say uh, one week or one hour or one day we are going to aggregate this um, pre we we are, we are pre aggregating it at a certain intervals and then when they ask for the you know uh, one hour or one day we are going to merge this pre aggregated data and then get, send them back the response so this way the amount of the data that we scan is less and then the and then the uh, speed at which we can uh, give the result back to the client is also faster right um, so i'm going to share the what's the schema for that and some detail about it yeah um so this has some interesting parts um like uh, if if you are not already aware of what's uh, some some you know some uh, combinators that clickhouse gives us okay so there we we have a table which is which has an engine type aggregating merge tree um so what this aggregating merge tree does is so there there is a primary key like if you do not specify any primary key this this is the primary key so if it if it whenever it sees a new record um, with this uh, what it is going to do is it is going to uh, aggregate the data for the columns which are of the aggregation functions type so we have this table dependency graph minutes it has a uh, um, like columns there is a source column uh like the in the if you if you visualize the dependency like service map in the in our page so there is going to be a source where the like the parent parent service and then there is going to be other child service so source is like parent destination is for the child service um what we are maintaining is uh we are interested in looking at the um what's the error rate between these two services what's the total call rate between these two services and then what is the uh, latency percentile for between these services let's say front end is making request to some um, you know card service so you are like if if somebody were to come and look at this page um, they can they can directly go and see hey like you know i have this service which is which is uh getting uh invoked by number of other services what's the request state like what's the incoming request state from various other services which one like uh if the if there is some errors like this this uh card service is throwing some errors which services are get, getting affected by this like you can go and look at hey like you know i have five incoming services and i look at the uh, parent and child relationship i can hope i can see hey okay so this one is like card service is throwing errors and then the request is coming from one particular service that gives you the detail okay so it's it's something that relate like it's something that um, relevant to between these two services you can you know rule out the other services that that sorts of um, um you know uh, debugging that one can do okay um, so the in the interesting detail that one can notice here is um so you what we so far know are the of the columns type like primitive columns like like you know like composed of primitives like you know strings you know float values you know uh, we we have date times etc etc but what clickhouse also allows us like so there is a, there is a uh type data type like this is along with the other like like arrays or floats there is one other type it's called aggregation function uh what it is going to uh, do is it 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 may it's going to maintain a state of this pre aggregated data uh it, so that when you when you finally need it it's going to match these parts and then give you the final result right so this is similar to how you are Uh, storing as strings you can also uh, a store a state of an aggregation function with this with this data type that's one of the you know um 
um, interesting part, like interesting thing about uh, this table where we are showing the intermediary state uh, of the aggregation. Okay, um, so how, what, what it is doing, uh, what, so this is the main table where we are studying information. And then similar to what we have seen earlier, uh, what is the, like you are now interested in between the service to service, right? Um, what we are doing, we are doing the same thing here. Now, if I know uh, what I'm interested in looking at is between the two services, what's the error rate, what's the percentile and what's the call rate. The logic is same here as well. Like you are looking at the spans and then you are looking at if this span has a um, service name different from its parent span, this is the entry point span. So we are going to maintain the detail, like the duration for this span. And then if it had an error count and the total number of calls as a call rate, so that when, when you come to the service, service map page, you have the details between the two services. Okay, and the interesting part uh, in this middle is view is that there is this quantile state. Um, so what this does is, as the data getting ingested. So ideally, what you have when you apply quantiles, it gives you the quantiles result as a bag. But when you append the state to it, what it is going to do is, it's not going to give you the result. Like you know, if you ask for the fiftieth uh, percentile or seventy fifth percentile. Ideally, it gives you the response back. But when you change it to the, when you append the state to it, it's not going to give you the uh, quantile result back. It's going to give you the some intermediate state, and you you keep this state uh, somewhere uh, for the pre-aggregated data. When you need it for the larger intervals, what can be done is these intermediate states can be merged, and then the final result can be calculated. Like, let's say. Um, uh, um, let's say if you, if you take the, uh, so what it internally, it, it, it knows how to, like, it knows what should be, it should be serialized to, and it knows how to merge this intermediate operation. Um, I, I think it's a bit best visualized if I show you one example, um, let me share some, um, Okay. Shigal, maybe a quick question. Uh, does aggregation work over quantiles? Does, yeah. So this, like we, we have seen a new data type aggregation function. What it is going to have is, it's not going to have the quantiles data. It's going to have the, in some intermediate state, which later can be merged to get the final result. And this should allow aggregation. So for example, the three edges of the service, right? If we aggregate those, can we get the aggregated latency for the service? Right. That should be possible. Yes. Okay. And it's a it's a native clickhouse function. Yes. So let let's look at the one of. Oh, so I think like if I'm not pranay, you're talking something different. Like you want to aggregate edges to get the application latency. Yeah, so my question sure. is earlier we are showing latencies for a service, right? Now we are yes. showing of a node basically. Now we are showing latencies all like all these metrics on the edges, right? Now yes. I understand like this is the more granular approach, but suppose we want to show overall in a service level how is the surface performing, right? Because is it red, uh, yellow, uh, green? Right, which is a different question than what we are currently solving. So if we want to show that, today we are not showing that, that's fine. But if we want to show something like that to our users, can we do that with this sort of data structure or there will need to be a different data structure? So yeah. you are comparing the earlier one with this one, is yes. it so? Yes. The earlier one was just based on span kind is equal to server. Mm -hmm. Now this has gone apart from that. If we want to achieve that, then we'll have to check again the entry point spans and correlate that with this somehow. This only has information about the edges. Yeah, so this this is now like, it, it still has the edges, but what 
let see what we are currently showing is what's the you know latencies between the service like from one service to another service what's the error rate right if you because we are grouping it by the source and the destination what, that's what we are interested in let's say if you get rid of the source and then i'm going to do the aggregation based on the destination column what it is going to do is it's going to merge these edges like you will still be so what, what, you will still be able to get the service level metrics what we are showing right now is the like what like preference like what are they interested in are they interested in looking between yes. the service or if they let's say if they if you you know some tomorrow you want to get i i, do, I no longer want to show it on the edges i only want to show it on the service overall what we can do like is we can get it up the source column like if i just include the destination column it's going to merge this uh uh uh, edges and then it gives you the response time. That's how. That's something uh, that can also be done. But but Srikant, uh, errors on the edges does not mean the service is throwing errors, right? No, it is right because it's between the services. It is still the let's say uh, card services. No, it's a, it's it's the same that point that you were saying, right? Not all errors are errors on the services. We are concerned with only errors of the entry point operations or spans of the service, right? Yes. You cannot say a service to be erroneous if a communication from service A to Kafka is throwing an error. The entry point of the service has to throw an error. Yes. To call the service to be throwing an error, right? Yes. So it is still correct, right? Let's say there's a card service. There's a service A, service B, which of both of them are calling card service. And then they are calling different resources within the card service. Let's say A has uh, error count of two, B has error count of three. When you merge this, it's the error, like it is still representing the card service total error count five, right? Like you, you, cannot, you can go merge them. If, if so what I'm saying is card service can show two access, even if card service to service X, is throwing errors so it is not necessarily merging. no that's not what we're service a calling service b okay service a okay. is calling service b service b is responding with errors but service a is not responding with errors so service a is not erroneous right no service a is not erroneous what service b is still erroneous right so let's yes, say service, service b will a be erroneous right so we were well, uh, the, accumulating the edges is not a very nobody uh, is saying destination as the service right yes so destination can, as a yes. service like you're going to group by the destination if the destination is responding back with the errors mm -hmm. if you still mm -hmm. aggregate like if you still merge the uh edges uh, for the for the service b as a like the what we want to show if you do that it is still a correct right yes that is correct but for that, we have to know all the incomings to a node. Like you cannot just say, like, like if just add the edges because the, basically the architecture has to be complete. Like it, there cannot be any components that is missing. I think Ankit, that is fine. Like if somebody is uh, not instrumenting all the services, we can't tell anything about it, right? We, we can yes. say based on what we know, what Signals knows, right? And yes. from that yes. perspective, this definition is accurate. Yes. Uh, yeah, so let me show you one of the records in this table so you know what uh, some more detail. Like if you look at this, like I'm going to just, I'm looking at just one row, one row for, from the dependency graph. So we can't if you're sharing something. Yeah, sorry. Uh, should I have to stop and reshare again? I think so. Yeah, can you see my screen? Show the started screen sharing. It's not showing. Yeah, it's black. Um, can you see it now? Oops. Yeah. Yes, now we can see. Yeah, so what I am sharing, showing here is a single row from the dependency graph minutes table. And if you look at it, um, so this source as a customer, MySQL as a destination, and then there is some data which is looks like a garbage for you. So we, we do not know what is there. Um, and then there is error count, there is call count. So what 
what the what you have seen in the table schema right there was a state like there was an aggregation function data type and then in the query which is like the trigger materialized views trigger it has a state so what clickhouse maintains is it maintains a a serialized like this is a binary serialized data about the information within that interval let's say if you are pre aggregating it for the one minute it's going to hold like this binary serialized data it's uh, going to have the information for one minute when you finally like you you now have the pre aggregated data for a one minute interval let's say if somebody asks and you know uh, for a one hour interval like hey show me the service dependency for one hour interval what we have to do is we 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 should tell the clickhouse that hey merge this uh, intermediate state that you have collected for the last one hour and then give me the data back um so now so you you see that this this data has like you know the intermediate like some state right um so can i uh, i'll also share the um uh, under command which is going to merge this intermediate like pre aggregated data and give you back the um response okay um so if you look at the command here um so what we are telling the clickhouse is so you you are going to have to merge the like you from the previous schema what you were doing is you were holding the state for the pre aggregated data now it should merge those intermediate states and then give me back the 50th 75th 95th 99th percentile of the data uh, and then like it, it should do the final aggregation based on this uh, like when you merge it uh, and give me the finalized aggregation so these are the new uh, like you know other like nice features of the clickhouse like so you you have the pre aggregated data merge them and then give me the final aggregation data as a result and then we are using this uh, result and then respond like you now you now you no longer have to hold like you know load all data in memory so let's say uh, if you want it for the last one interval if you are pre aggregating it for the one minute you are only going to have to merge the 60 like last 60 uh, rows of this data and then respond back to the client so this is this is faster and this is giving the data in a uh, it's it's still the like real time it's not like we are uh, not showing them some you know bigger interval so this is other you know um, improvement we made use of using the like uh, features of the clickhouse awesome contribution one quick question for prashant everything seems good here right the performance has increased by a lot we see a lot of Correct data. What is the trade-off that we took? Uh, granularity would be one, I think. No, but the UI does not leave the like we just have one minute, five minute, thirteen minutes, thirty minutes. There is another hit we took somewhere. Uh, so the interval is like kind of uh, rigid. It's like facing kind of. Yeah, so like one is that like no no intermediate states can be achieved. Like you cannot say like one point five to three point five minutes or something like that. It cannot be done. What's another hit we took? Another one. I'm not sure. What is that? Anyone yes, apart sir. from Shrikant? Who said that? Okay, our trace ninja. Right. So we had took a hit on ingestion rate because this has to be calculated per on every minute so we are calculating it on the go on the on each block all right, right. <laughs> yeah so every time there every time there is an insert to the original table now you have the so there is there is this there is another like we we have seen the top level entry point stands right these these two get triggered like these two materialized use get triggered we pre calculate it so how does now like the clickhouse has to do this job also right it also has to ingest it to the original table and then it also like there is there, there was a um, self join between the table if you if you remember it from the schema there was a self join with its own table to get the data and then apply this metric right so that's we we do not know how much like how like quant quant qualitative like quant quantitative numbers for it but it's going to affect how signals um sorry uh, clickhouse um affects by by this uh, uh new metalized views uh from the ingestion so if it's for every uh 
like you know insert up that happens it caused that then we should actually definitely try in the high load <clears throat> how it affects like performance right uh, so if you have like a lot of insertion happening <clears throat> uh, so can you find like uh, some intermediate like you know uh, sweet spot like uh, where uh, it might not happen for every insert or like for but for some interval or some like you know or, or some number of insertions would that be yeah possible? so the traces are already batched like it's not like uh, we are, we already have this batching which which is uh, like the clickhouse traces exported is there it's already has this batching uh, it does not directly like insert each trace um so it it like you, you yeah so the basically what i'm saying is it, the batching is there like it does not happen uh, like for every single trace and then the hit that like the bit to right now is that every so if the volume is so high that the batching uh, is as 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 frequent as the regular trace right so that that might affect it um, yeah so uh, there there is an issue that where we want to see how this affects yeah